Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, here we are in Madison, Wisconsin at Canucopia. It is the world's largest paddle sports consumer event in the world. Uh, more than 250,000 square feet of kayaks, canoes, stand-up paddle boards, outdoor equipment, and clothing. But um, I'm only here for one thing, and that is my new kayak. Stay tuned. Okay, we made it. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, tonight I'm going to be unwrapping, unboxing, whatever you want to call it, my brand new kayak. Let's get to it. So I'm on the Native Watercraft Pro Staff Team, very proud to be on the Native Watercraft Pro Staff Team. Um, and I went to Canoe, Canoe, how do you say it? I went to Canoe Copia last weekend in Madison, Wisconsin, and I got to meet the president of the company, um, a bunch of individuals that are on the Pro Staff Team, some of the fishing team, and uh, the salesman that I was working with, Greg Larson. Really nice people. Uh, they're very passionate about the sport passionate about paddle sports and, and kayak fishing and just it's a really great experience and they were all nice guys. So, on to the new boat. I mean, we're talking so new, I haven't even had a chance to unwrap it yet. It's still in the bubble wrap. Uh, it's still got the tags on it. This is a brand new model. Uh, it just came out last, the end of last year, 2018. Um, so it's, from what I have researched and what, from what I understand, it's not a very popular uh, kayak right now. There, it may be popular, but there's not a lot of um, not a lot of media out there regarding this model. So I'm really excited to get my hands on it and, and, and fish with it this year. And I'm very, like I said, very proud to be on their team. Um, but it is the 2019 model, and it is the Native Watercraft Slayer 12 XC. It's, it's kind of a cross conditions, is what they like to label it as, a uh, kayak. Cross conditions meaning that it's good for ponds and lakes but also for rivers and creeks, which is almost exclusively what I fish, and I think this thing is gonna be a creeks and river fishing machine. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. So, kind of a little background here, real quick, a little story, and I don't know about a story, kind of an ex explanation, that's the word I'm looking for. I haven't recorded a video, or I haven't uploaded a video for quite some time. As a matter of fact, the last video I uploaded was last month. A lot of it has to do with, with this year. It's been a really, really, just kind of a weird year for me. Um, I've gone through three different jobs, and I explained all that in the last video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But basically, I haven't been out fishing very much at all this winter. I've neglected fishing too much. 
and a lot of it, like I said, has to do with this new job and transitioning jobs and all this stuff. So what I was trying to get to is that I was, I've been thinking about this ever since I got this kayak, even before, for a long time. I've been trying to figure out how I want to do this video and like writing stuff down and, you know, kind of just really just working myself up more than what I should. So I think I kind of made the decision today that I'm just going to, I'm just going to dive right into it, unscripted, kind of shoot from the hip, like I always do. I think that's just when I'm most comfortable and that's just how I like to do it. Um, so without further ado, like I said, let's get right into it. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a first person perspective of this uh, unwrapping. So I've got my handy dandy uh, seat belt cutter. We're going to go ahead and cut this thing right open. So let's get right to it. So we're just going to start here. What do you think, huh? This might not work. I'm just going to cut the tape. Oh yeah, see that? Look at that. Oh man, I have not even, like I said, this is the first time that I've seen this, this kayak. I basically got it at Kinucopia, loaded it up onto my car, and uh, drove home. Drove all the way back to Indiana. Uh, let's see, this isn't really working as well as I thought it was going to. Thing's supposed to cut seatbelts, man. These bungees. All right, you know what? You got the gist of it. I'm gonna put this camera down. Man, this thing. Uh, material. We're almost there. And there we go. That is a beautiful sight, isn't it, Sissy? Okay. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There's a couple things that I didn't. Uh, that, that were not wrapped when I got them, and that's the seat, um, the seat tray, and the console, the center console. So let me go get those real quick. So I'll just sit those in there for now. I'll give you kind of a little walk around to kind of show you, show you how this all works. So it does have a very comfortable and adjustable seat. Check it out. <clears throat> So yeah, the seat has uh, two positions, like I said. It's got a high position, which is this right here, and I'm not gonna bolt everything down right now. Uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna leave it all unbolted. But this is in the high position right now. You can lower the seat down into a low position for if you're gonna you know, paddle, if you got some moving water coming up or some you know, minor rapids or whatever, you can put the seat down so that you can mitigate the chance of uh, going overboard. Uh, let's see what else you've got an adjustable seat of course it's adjustable here at the strap so you can lower it and you know lower it down for if you're gonna portage your boat or you want to put it in your car or whatever you've got storage area back here you can put a couple uh, Plano boxes back in there the 3700 will fit back there no problem and then you've got the center console and by the way take this chair off here for a second this this is the seat tray, and it's there. It's got tackle storage underneath your seat. It's also got these straps. These straps are gonna be used for when you choose whichever seat position you want. You can strap the seat down and hold it in place. But this, uh, this seat tray has these, um, these mount bolts, okay? And they bolt right into the track system. So it's also adjustable, and that's how you slide your seat forward and aft uh, in the kayak. And those just bolt down right there and then there's the adjustment nuts to tighten it all down these right here what's going to lock it into place into the into the uh the, the railing so you're going to take these off okay these little you can see them how they turn maybe you can't i don't know bad lighting but they're little wing nuts okay and you can turn those you're going to take them off get them to the point where they're far enough off of the seat tray that you can slide them into into these uh the rails. You're going to slide them in there and you're going to tighten your seat pan down just enough to where you can slide it forward and reverse and once you get it to where you want it you're going to tighten it down all the way and that's going to lock you in place. So there's that. You can see how easy this slides. It'll be interesting to see how well it slides after a day on the uh, on the creek or the river after it gets a lot of grit and sand in there. I don't think it's going to be an issue but time will tell. I think it'll be fine. Just a little gritty, but that's how it goes when you're fishing creeks and rivers. Put the seat back in its high position. We'll move on to the uh, center console. 
We've got little bungees here. You can put little day boxes, little dry boxes, whatever you want, little gear and stuff. You've also got a uh, rail. Okay, you can mount, uh, I don't know, a phone holder, a tablet holder, what have you. You've got a cup holder. You've got some little tool storage here. You can go ahead and bungee this open. Open up the center hatch here. And we'll get to this little plate in a minute. But this is a good spot for your uh, for your electronics, you know, for food, water, more tackle, whatever. You, you know, put a small cat in there. I don't know. Close that back up. And then this has also got a nut. It's got a, a wing nut, and it's just one nut. It locks down in there, locks it down so it doesn't go anywhere. So, but the really cool thing about this kayak that I really like, one of many features, is that this thing completely takes off, okay? So we'll just set that down. And that leaves you with this plate that comes with the kayak as well. You can stick this down, okay? And it comes with four, four screws. You screw it down into the floor. It's got this gasket, okay? So it's watertight. Put this down, screw it down. It's a watertight seal. You've got this whole open deck for if you're a fly fisherman, you can strip your fly line. It's not going to get tangled up in anything. It's a nice big open deck. You can walk around, tap dance, pitch and flip, break dance, do the moonwalk, whatever you want to do. You know, handstands, jumping jacks, flapjacks, all that good stuff. It also comes with this silent decking. Really awesome. It's going to be really comfortable on your feet when you're fishing barefoot. And it, you know, it makes it just a little less, you know, noisy which is another really cool feature that comes standard on the boat. Of course, you got your scupper plugs. You've got your adjustable foot, uh, foot rests, which I mean, you can, you can take those off for an even cleaner front deck if you wanted to. Um, I'm just trying to go over some of the features that, that really kind of caught my eye when I was researching this boat. Um, you've got rod holders on each side. Well, you've got rod tip protectors, okay? And these are obviously, these are removable if you would like. You've got a paddle holder. You slip your paddle up in there. And that's going to keep your paddle secure. And you've got, man, you've just got these foam accents all over the place for, you know, for comfort. And uh, just to make it a little easier on your hands when you're carrying the kayak. Foam padding there on your handle. Foam padding here on the rear handle. It looks like it comes with a little, uh, little extra piece in case you ever puncture a hole, I think is what that's for. But I think that's where that came from, is that hole when they cut it out. I'm not sure. Overall, just a really awesome, you got, you know, access in here if you want to ins install your micro power pole. Whatever you want to do. If you want to rig it up with a, with a rudder, which I really don't think you'll need to because I'm going to cover that feature here in a second. You've got molded in um, rod holders, one per side. You've got this huge, this boat, or this kayak is 36 and a half inches wide. If you want to talk about stability, you should not have any problems at all, even if you're a big guy in this kayak with stability. You got plenty of room for you know your kayak crate, your your what do you call that? What is it, the black pack? All those different you know the plano, the big tower looking deal with your whatever. All kinds of different you know storage options. You got the bungees. These disconnect right there. Scupper plugs. But I I mean you could honestly work your way back here and you could stand in this back part and you can cast and fish sight fish all day all day long tie downs the attention to detail of this boat is just it's just really cool you've got foam accents all over the place just for just to help with you know sealing out water keeping debris out also for deadening sound you know to be more stealthy and you're probably noticing this handle right here which is a really big deal and this is why I was talking about you probably wouldn't need to rig up a rudder because what this serves as is a drop down skeg so check it out flip that handle towards the towards the front and that drops down the skeg. Let's do it one more time. Wish the lighting was a little better. Let's get some better lighting real quick. Okay, I got some light. Boom! So like I was saying the retractable skeg, just give that switch or that handle a, a flick. Boom, you got a retractable skeg. And the really cool thing is that if you're in moving water, 
and you forget that you need to bring it up for whatever case you got a boulder coming or you got you know a sandbar or you got high or you got uh, shallow water this thing is spring loaded so if you go over some terrain and you forget that it's you forget that it's in the down position it's spring loaded so it's just going to spring you know anytime you hit a shallow area it's just going to spring right back up into the hole so no problems there really awesome feature of this boat so of course it's also got this protector here so if you're if you have to drag your boat for whatever reason that's removable and replaceable so if it wears down you know it's going to it's going to protect your hole for one but if it uh, wears down, you can just unbolt that, two little bolts, and uh, replace it, no problem. I think this thing is gonna be a killer river and stream boat, I really do. You know, the features carry on to the other side, it's all the same on this side as well. Oh, another feature. You've got these uh, molded in grooves, okay? And you've got this hole. Very back of the boat right here. Okay, and so what that is for, and you've got these, of course you can see these little eyelets. But that is for if you have, if you wanna use a drag chain, you can go ahead and hook you up a drag chain. It's ready to go. The chain's going to lay in there nice and tidy and neat and not get snagged up. You can release your drag chain from your, if you've got a uh, anchor wizard. That's right. That's what I was looking for, the anchor wizard. you got the anchor wizard, and you haven't seen those, you can look them up. But it's, it's basically, it's just a, a little drum. Um, and I think it's, I think it's spring-loaded. And it's got a little handle on top, and you can just turn your little handle, and that'll drop your chain. Really, really simple design. I really like it. Really clean <clears throat> and simple. And that's what I like. Really cool feature of this boat. It's also got these cutouts here, and what these are for are for your reels. Um, big enough for a fly reel, obviously, but uh, you know, adequate for spinning and bait casting gear. And that's going to allow your reel to sit in that recess and allow your rods to travel up this way and right into that tip protector. If you're going to portage, you know, from your from your car or truck to the to the water's edge, or if you're like us like me and the guys from Quest for 23 and the Smalley Talk Pad podcast. You know, our trip to the Menominee River last year was absolutely insane. And we had some incredible, insane, outrageous portages that we had to do. Uh, some of the most physically demanding things that I've ever had to do in my life, in my entire life, and that includes the Army. But like I said, if you're gonna be doing some crazy otherworldly portages like that, these are gonna be great to protect your rods from getting snagged in the bushes and trees and, you know, whatever else you encounter, Yetis, Bigfoot, stuff like that. But yeah, man, that's, for the most part, that's uh, the main features of the boat. Um, I said it was 36 and a half inches wide. Okay, so I think, I'm pretty sure we did. We covered the gunnel uh, section of the boat. I think it's the gunnel, right? Yeah, anyway. And then we, we covered the uh, stern, the stern, you know, storage area. It's not very big, but it's big enough to get your hand in there and, uh, you know, adjust anything that you need to, you know, adjust or any kind of cables or, you know, if you've got uh, internal if you're gonna run batteries you can get back here and do your uh, micro power pull like we already covered so that's cool and dandy but we'll go up to the front because I did not cover the front storage portion and it is it looks pretty sizable so um, let's go ahead and open that up ah, oh my dude doing? dude what are you doing dude what are you doing in my crib do what what are you doing in my crib I was sleeping here for all night what is this is MTV Cribs kayak edition how is it in there is it pretty spacious it doesn't look too bad in there, to be honest with you. Is there a lot of room down that way? Let's get the light in there. Here, take the light for me. Yeah, how's it looking in there? Pretty far down. Yeah? Hmm. All right, let's get you out of there. It's really bright. Yeah. Climb on what out of there. What are you there. doing? What the heck is going on, dude? Oh, yeah, I remember she was in there. Dude, too. boat came with two kids, dude. That's a heck of a deal. So anyway, yeah guys, lots of lots of storage in there, plenty of storage. Let's go ahead and get a light in there and uh, really give you a good view. You can you can fit you can fit like there you all go. kinds of rods in there. It's still got some plastic shavings from when they trim the boat up. But look at that. I mean all down the sides, in the middle, you can put fly rods down in there, extra gear, plenty of room for camping gear, what have you. And then of course it goes all the way up that way as well. So plenty of storage. As a matter of fact, I, I could probably slide in there if I really wanted to, but I'm not gonna. So anyway, how's that seat, man? Pretty comfortable? I like this place. Home bed, night. Night, night, sleep good. Okay, we'll see ya. We'll see you in the morning, okay, for school. Love you. Love you too. Okay, see ya. Okay, so she's good. How's the seat? Oh, okay, man, that was quick. All right. 
You got it? There's a lot of poop in there. There's no poop in there. That's, that's plastic from when they trimmed it up. So I think that's about it uh, as far as... Yeah, it's like a human hatch cover. All right, guys, so that's about it. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Stuck. Hit that like button if you liked it, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Don't worry, stop.